Thanks for taking time and staying until this late time. Uh, in continuation to my talk, uh, Sebastian, my colleague, uh, I'm going to talk about a different uh, part of the Nuxt.js. It's the behind the scenes of the Nuxt.js that how internally we are, how, what, in, what internal challenges we have, and uh, how internally we made this framework modular enough to be awesome. So, so it fits to every use case. It's not just a really good API for developer experience, but it's also a really powerful framework so that's working for any use case. So I'm starting with a brief history. Uh, it's like, it was like almost two years ago that we started the framework. We, we never was expecting that this framework is getting this much popular and have this amount of requests. And it was a start with, uh, actually one of the important reasons was, was uh, 0 0.9. It was, it just had 260 commits, it was using generator, it was really shitty code, but everyone was loving it. So uh, if you are going to create this open source project, don't be ashamed that your code quality is not good because people are going to learn you, people are going to teach you to how to improve. And this was how we improved in these years. Uh, so like a few mo months after that, uh, we made, we released another major release. Uh, it was the first release that was supporting async data, separating data from async data. So we can see the commits was doubled. And like uh, uh, when we started growing, uh, everything was harder. So we had to do more contributions, do, do more commits. And uh, so it takes more time. And it was one of the really best releases, the one, one zero zero. Uh, before that, we was stuck to a release alpha, alpha release cycle health. So we was beta testing releases to ensure that the first stable release is really stable. Actually, that was the time that it was highly uh, contributing to this project. And we was making sure that it's really fitting the real world requirements. Uh, as you can see, it's, everything was harder after that. So it took more time to release two versions. And uh, like uh, with measure of one, we dropped uh, Node.js below eight. Uh, we supported more nat more uh, modern server side code, so it was more performant. And with version two, uh, we introduced much more improvements for at least for the developers, like the fancy loading bar supporting ESM and lots of more things that making it development easier for you. And now we are at stage that. Uh, we have more than 1,000 more commits in the master. So it's slowly becoming harder and harder. So we have to find solutions for scaling this project and uh, answering new requirements of developers because now they're just expecting a lot of us. I think, I hope that uh, you have a better vision that uh, how it's getting harder for us. So sometimes people get asking us that why you don't quite often release, why you uh, don't stick with the release plans, but it's really hard. It's, it has more challenges that we have to ensure that it's breaking no one because some companies are really trusting on the framework for their enterprise. And so far, we probably like closed more than 4.6k issues, and some of them are really challenging. So we have to spend lots of days and talking with each other to decide to how to fix that problem. It's not really easy. And we probably having less than 100 issues, so it's really good sign. It's really thanks to the community. It's not possible by the core team itself. We have more than 2k merge pull requests, and you know this is really hard. Sometimes uh, when I'm doing a review, it's like I think, hey man, I can just spend one hour and fix everything. But it's really good part about this open source community that you involve more people in the project and. During this interview, review thing, uh, you, you understand some of your weaknesses. We have more than 56K public dependent projects. We don't exactly know how many projects are using. Like, we discovered some huge companies are using Nuxt, but like Fox News, we just randomly un uh, discovered them. And it's also really surprising for us. Uh, this is more challenging for my, me myself because I'm maintaining lots of these modules. Uh, these modules are like somehow additions to the fr core framework. And sometimes it's really hard. Like every morning I wake up, uh, 
have to check multiple issues, multiple pull requests, and it's really hard to manage them. Sometimes I forget to release them. So we are looking for more automation things uh, and also for more contribution from uh, community to make this maintenance easier because it's really out of our hands. Our docs has more than 1. million uh, doc views, uh, page views. We had more than 100 releases. We have more than 700K monthly downloads. And probably more than 10K Nuxters. Actually, today we find this name. I really like it. So just Nuxters, hands up. We have lots of Nuxters. Proud of you. High five. <laughs> and you know, sometimes some results are crazy because around this framework, like entire core team, we are creating solutions for not just stuff like for testing, for a CDN of the service worker or things like that. And in the morning, actually I was late, I was creating the slides and I just discovered uh, one of our packages, Workbox CDN, has more, was more popular than Vue.js in the JS Deliver. It's like feeling really good because uh, alongside with the project itself, we are helping a lot to the NPM community and it's really thanks to the users, I mean our users that are trusting the framework and the, fra the package around it that crazy stuff like this are happening. Uh, we put a lot of effort to make Nuxtis a modular framework. So you may see lots of random frameworks popping up every day but uh, at a, like after a while that you are using it, you are stuck to it and you don't have enough solutions. So we are always fighting to make the framework modular enough to answer new requirements. And also the internals are fully modular. Like a, a while ago, it was not even a major release. We converted Nuxtious to a monorepo exactly because we was thinking about the feature and how to be prepared for the feature and new requirements. And there's a funny fact, because that time we was talking about it, now Nux is able to also handle React applications. So we can easily create a React uh, package for it, and uh, it also supports React out of the box. But uh, we just uh, love Vue.js, so we keep using Vue.js. So you may just feel like this. Because uh, one time we was, uh, making an April Fool's joke, uh, we say uh, we are going to support more frameworks, but after that, we internally talk and say, hey, man, it doesn't make sense. We is handling all of the requirements. And it's not only us, it's like a galaxy of dependencies that we are using by Nux. So it's a graph generated based on the contributors to our sub-dependencies, and these huge things are really thanks, happening thanks to these awesome developers. Maybe some of the faces are familiar to you. And it's really hard sometimes because if any of these packages are broken, we are in the trouble and we have to action quickly because people are starting making issues that, hey, Nux is not working, Nux is broken. We have to explain that this is one of the dependencies that's broken. And you know, if you're a JS developer, you, can, you already experienced that. And handling regression is really hard. And also sometimes we are helping the other projects to make the migration path easier. Like the help we have to do for the Vue 3 or Webpack 5 upgrade, we have to uh, help the other projects like Webpack plugins to be prepared for Webpack 5 because we, because we are going to support Webpack 5 as soon as possible. So a brief explanation of the next core modules because I mentioned them. Uh, we split the code base into smaller modules. The first one is the Nux core. It's supporting the main thing that's like a glue that convert, connecting all of the parts of the frameworks together. We have a config package, uh, which is meant to keep the defaults, sanitize the options. So it's really interesting that we, we usually don't have breaking changes even in major releases because most of the magic is happening behind the scenes. Uh, we are internally uh, handling the breaking changes, so we, do, we don't really like breaking changes. It's hurting users. We separated server, uh, so it's an enhanced server with uh, some middleware like for fancier errors, for default middleware for saving assets, compressing, and things like that. Uh, we also abstracted the builder layer. It, the initial idea was to support more builders like a parcel. So it's also po uh, technically possible that you can write a parcel 
build there for Nuxt. But by default, we just use Webpack because this brings more consistency. So this is one of the reasons that we stick to one solution for everything. So the community is just consistent. So as you expect, we have a Webpack implementation for that. Uh, we have a Babel preset. And also that's the entire magic. So the way that we are approaching for Vue 3 is to create a Nuxt Vue app next and experiment it. So we don't break our exciting users, but uh, we can start beta testing it for users. It's really good news because we already do the refactor. And we also abstracted the view renderer. Also generator and CLI stuff. So we are not sat never satisfied. For my definition, someone was asking me that, what's your definition of a good developer? And my answer was, uh, actually Sebastian's answer was that a de good developer is someone that's accepting others' vision and listening to everyone. My answer was that a good developer is someone that never satisfies and always wants improvements. So that's why we are always believing in improvements. And for the mid-term uh, mid feature plan, uh, we are planning to go beyond, beyond the front-end stuff and SSR stuff. And making Nuxt.js a full stack framework. So even if you want to create a plain API, you can still use Nuxt.js to create your API. And even if you want to host it somewhere or making some, I, I don't want to spoil the new ideas, but yes, we are thinking about lots of more new ideas behind the Nuxt. So we have one framework, one solution, one community, and we can use it for every solution. Uh, I'm going to mention one of them a little bit more in depth. Uh, it's based on the current proposal, uh, which is Nuxt functions. Uh, functions are basically, if you already use server middleware, server middleware are basically like express middleware. So in your Nuxt application, you can create like express middleware for simple use cases, but they are not really good for developers. So they are a higher level implementation and it's so common that you can create a functions directory, create your functions over there, and just like paste, they are mapped to the routes. So you don't need to create a router. And the other benefit is that they are integrated with the runtime. So you don't need to, in the client side, to map them to, like, map the paths to the function names. So when you create a function, it's already available in your context. You don't need to worry about how to configure the endpoint or what endpoint it is or what arguments should I have. And it's giving us much more possibilities. Like uh, when, you, when we are automatically integrating them together, uh, for example, we can have typings. So when you call get user, you have the fields of the user object. And one other benefit is that we have uh, Lambda target support, uh, which basically means that for several media where we cannot detect or separate them, so unfortunately we have to bundle everything together. But using functions, we can create separate chunks for Lambda entry points. And we are going to add some helpers like JSON to convert it to JSON. And also modules can provide functions. So if you are going to create a solution, you can expose your functions to the project. Like, if you have a service, you can just introduce a module, next module, and say, just install this next module as a single line, and you can use it in your application without being worried about anything. Uh, this is a quick example of how it's working. Uh, so, if you want to create a function for giving the user object, you can create functions, stack authentication, and slash user is like a uh, convention. And you can use pretty much API similar to Express. You can re res respond to the JSON thing. But the fancy part is this here, uh, that in your application, you don't need to make an HTTP call. You can use functions from the context. And it's automatically mapped to the file name. You don't need to worry about how it is being mapped and if you have types, you can also have to automatically have the types. And it has a really performance for performance benefit for server side, because instead of making HTTP calls in the server side, now, right now, you have to make HTTP calls even when you are doing SSR. 
But now we have the possibility to make direct calls, which is much more faster. And you can think about in infinity possibilities with functions. We was brainstorming that what we can do, we can use, if you have a small project, uh, or for example, you have a, a small requirement for, for example, you have a Jamstack application, but you want to add a payment support. You can easily create a function. You can have integration with database like PhonoDB, you can have creating contact page, you can uh, bring authentication support, or it was a genius idea from one of our community members to generate a PDF version of the web page. So we was thinking about Nuxus like for web applications, but actually they was using it to generate PDF files. It was quite innovative idea. And we also have a, actually we are working on a solution for using GIMP to doing image size out of the box. So you can also do it for it or anything, any other requirement that you can imagine. One other thing that uh, PIM, actually uh, one of our other members, uh, core team members is working on is Nux Lambda, uh, which is a really great idea. We was all surprised by it. Uh, actually the base idea is to create a super optimized SSR only build. We already made the refactors to separate the renderer. So his idea was why not just directly using the renderer module for Lambdas? Because usually the serverless environments uh, provide the higher level things like compression or saving static assets. So for the cold start time, it doesn't make sense to bootstrap everything or bring everything into the memory. So we can directly use Nux view renderer. Uh, it has some limitations for sure. For example, you have to only use pre lonely modules because some modules can hook in the runtime, but it's, it's adding performance overhead. Uh, it's not uh, bundling the aesthetic assets because serverless environments should uh, handle them by CDN layer. It has optional compression. Uh, the reason that is optional, we didn't remove it, is that it seems that AWS is not supporting compression. So in some serverless environments, we still need it. So we keep it it's as an optional thing, function, but if you disable it, it's removed from the final build. So the final build is quite optimized. And also you can make the handlers configurable. So if you feel you need something more like Connect or Express or Metal, I will going to mention it later, you can quickly switch it. But uh, actually we was talking that probably we prefer the minimal because minimal is directly using Node.js and Node.js is enough for most of the use cases. You don't need something heavyweight like Express. And these are some really fantastic benchmarks he was doing. Actually, these benchmarks are, could be much more because uh, it's on a plain application. It's like a Hello World application. It is three times faster for a startup time, total time, and it's 36% less memory use. These numbers mean a lot. These numbers means that your customers are more satisfied, your users are more satisfied, and you pay less because uh, you are using server less to pay less. So it's making a lot, meaning a lot. And, but still we have to do some core uh, improvements because it's a proof of concept right now. So we are in, uh, almost sure that this is really the right approach. Uh, we are going to create a new package which is out of the box optimized build of the Next.js, especially for Lambda. So you can use optional packages, but you can also hack yourself and create your own solutions based on the core. And we have to avoid side effects, like sometimes we are registering global listeners for errors, but it's preventing tree shaking happen, and if we want a really optimized bundle, we have to prevent side effects. We are going to abstract a logger, like if you already heard, we have a package called Consula, it's like for fancy logs, but for serverless environments or production environment, it doesn't make sense to use something like that. So we are going to abstract the layer, the logger layer, so it's much more efficient. Uh, actually, the current implementation is already doing this, but we are going to move this functionality to the core, is to serialize next config because we can have ESM syntax in the config, and right now, you have to load it every time, and you have to parse it every time. So uh, we are working to serialize part of it, which is required for the runtime, and we don't need to load and parse the file. 
And also we are going to lazy load the bundle renderer. Actually, uh, we already do a lot like on top of the Vue.js implementation to lazy load the page chunks. So uh, right now, if you deploy a Node.js application to a serverless environment, uh, every page is lazy loaded. It's already lazy loaded. We are even going to move it further and lazy load like SPA renderer only if it's required. Or if you're just, uh, if you are just going to hit a function, we don't load any render at all. So it's making it even more efficient for real time, real world use cases. The other thing that uh, one of our other core team members is working on is not just metal. Um, currently we are using a lightweight version of the Express. It's called Connect. It's super fast, it's super stable, but it's pretty old. It's like it has some pipes for not below zero. So it doesn't make sense to keep, in, keep using that dependencies. This Nox method is a complete rewrite of, of Connect. It's fully backward compatible. It's supporting async because we are living right now. And it has zero dependencies. So it's perfect for several let's say, use cases. And thanks for attention. I also have to thank our, my friends in Iran because it was the first time, actually each year, I wanted to attend to this conference. I didn't have any way. I just was following the tweets and one time I remember I was crying because I wanted to be here. It's really my pleasure being here. And this year we had a live stream, so my friends in Tehran, was, they could watch this event. And really thanks for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Puya.